Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Today is a bit of a project day, and I'm right now, I'm going to show you how I am making, for the first time ever, cowboy candy. I am going to be using the recipe from that she used in that 1870s homestead, and we're just going to kind of do her method with that uh, to the best of our ability. And so we already have some new jars on the stove and they are boiling, well, coming up to a boil. You don't need to do that step. I just like to do that, especially with anything water bath canning. It kind of just, I prefer to do that. You don't have to do that. And then also we have our, we're using some new uh, canning jars here that we have. And I wanted to show you, I've never actually come across this. I thought it was something that was worth showing you guys and making sure even when you get new lids and new jars and things like that, you always need to make sure that you're checking them. And this one was actually in the jar. I don't know if it's gonna come across on camera. Let me hide my face here. You can kind of see it's got these areas. I just froze a bunch of cherries, so my fingers are kind of stained. But you can kind of see on there, we got these two areas here. And, um, you know, we're obviously not going to want to use that one. So you want to make sure that you're checking them. Some of them can be super scratched. You don't want to use them. So just make sure that you're inspecting them even when they're new. So, well, obviously the lids are going to be new because they're always new. But even when you get it like out of a jar, out of, out of, here, you want to make sure that you're visually inspecting them. The reason that we were doing these, I was not planning on doing this recipe. I went to Costco today and they were selling these uh, five pound bags of jalapenos for like six bucks. They're not organic, so I don't want to ferment them, but I could ferment them. I, I mean, I really, realistically I could, but I'm going to go ahead and make some of this cowboy caviar because I think my husband's really going to like it. Well, let's go ahead and get started. So the first part of this process that we are going to do is we need to destem these. There's various ways that you can process these and chop them up. On the 1870s homestead, she chopped them up. She had like some fancy um, like food processor-ish kind of thing that got that just kind of diced them up. And we don't have that. And I don't um, I don't know how much how many this is. I feel like I would just enjoy this more in, and they look prettier in with the jalapeno rounds. So we're gonna do the rounds. I'm not gonna deceive them. We really like the extra kick. I'm gonna cut the, the end off and then I'm just gonna slice them by hand. So we're just gonna whiz through this as quickly as we possibly can do. These came in the bag, kind of, I didn't really get to pick and choose these. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm very careful and uh, kind of selecting the pieces that I need to kind of cut out. Um, but just because a little piece is bad doesn't mean the whole jalapeno is bad unless you open it up and it's obviously the whole thing is bad. But we're going to go ahead and get started on this. I'm gonna do this. So I'm just going to cut it in rounds. I mean, I'm not going to be super picky about making sure they're all like exactly the same size, but I'm going to try and get them roughly the same size. And then just into the can or into the into the holding bowl. The next thing we're going to do is make the brine slash syrup that we're going to be cooking this in. And what we need, um, I will link down below the article, article, the blog, whatever you want to call it, uh, where this recipe came from. But I'm going to be tripling this recipe um, because I had 10 pounds of 10 pounds of jalapenos and it, each multiplication is for three times. So I'm just going to be a little bit short on the brine, which is totally fine. So we need, for the, for a triple batch, we're gonna need six cups of apple cider vinegar. There we go. And a ridiculous amount of sugar. We need 18 cups of sugar. Ugh. And then we're gonna need a one and a half teaspoons of turmeric, the same amount of celery seed, and then three 
tablespoons of granulated garlic, three teaspoons of cayenne, and that is gonna be a tablespoon. So I'm gonna do a heaping tablespoon because we really like heat around here. So that's basically two tablespoons. Do what you wish for your heat level. So now we're gonna bring this up to a boil and we're gonna let it boil for four minutes. If it's different, I'll tell you. So now it's at a rolling boil, so we're gonna let it go ahead and boil for four minutes. She said four or five minutes, so. And I'm gonna stay close by it to make sure that it doesn't boil over. Okay, so we do need to, we just bring it up to a boil and then we lower the heat and let it simmer for four minutes. So I had that wrong the first time. Um, thankfully I just kind of rewatched that little part of it. And so we're just gonna let it simmer for four to five minutes. All right, time is up. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the jalapenos in there. You wanna make sure you're being kind of careful with it. You don't wanna splash yourself because this brine here is insanely hot. Or the brine, the, um, the syrup here, it is like a syrup if you've ever made jam and burned yourself with it. It's like the burn that just keeps on burning through your skin uh, when it gets to that temperature. So just make sure you're using a, a lot of caution when you're dumping it in there. So this is gonna shrink down quite a bit as I'm cooking it. So I'm gonna leave it as is in this pot. So we're gonna go ahead and just bring this up to a boil, like a rolling boil that you can't stir down is what she said. And then once that happens, when we get to that level, we're gonna turn the heat down and let it simmer for another four minutes. I'm trying to get all this under the brine here. Ooh, that is sticky. All right, I'm not gonna go far away because we wanna make sure that we're watching it really carefully. Okay, so our time is up. We are gonna go ahead and take this off the stove and start portioning it into the jars. I believe that I have everything that I'm going to need here. So we're going to go ahead. We're just going to start portioning them into each of these jars and, <coughs> and we'll see how much we have left. So next what we're going to do, I, I just had a little bit too much for a full canner load. So I just um, put it into these pint jars and I'm going to uh, just cover them and put them in the fridge and then um, just do it that way because I don't want to do a whole nother one. Actually, I think I'm not going to pack these down because I want to get enough brine in there. Enough of that vinegar. And I looked and I didn't notice her mentioning and uh, as well as on the, the blog, I didn't see anywhere where it said what the headspace for this is supposed to be. So I'm gonna guess right around, I'm gonna guess like a half, half an inch. Um, that's just what I'm going with. <laughs> so, all right, time to get a little over here. Now we're gonna go ahead and debubble. Sticky. Time to fill it up. That's a lot of brine left over. Oh my goodness. Okay, next we're gonna take a paper towel dipped in some vinegar. I feel like this one is extra super duper important because these are so sticky. Like, oh my gosh. 
So we're going to get any particles that might be on there and as well as uh, kind of cutting the sugar, the sticky sweet sugar that's on there that can kind of hinder hinder the uh, the ability for the kit for, to hinder the seal. How about that? So now we're going to put the lids on here. Okay, now we're going to tighten up these rings here. We're going to do them fingertip tight, which is as tight as you can realistically get them with these three fingers without like, you know, cranking them down. I just do the fingertips and then it's usually pretty good. Now we're gonna put these into the canner. The canner is is warm, um, but it's not like hot, like it's not boiling or simmering or anything like that. It's just, it's really warm. So apparently I can only fit 10 of these in there. Uh, we didn't account for the thickness of the lid adding to it. So we're gonna process those 10 and probably because I can split this up and make it almost another full uh, canner load, I'm probably just gonna can all of it. So we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna process these um, in one, we're gonna bring it up to a boil. And once it is at a rolling boil, we're gonna set the timer for 10 minutes. When the 10 minutes is up, we are going to shut it off, take the lid off, and then wait at least another five minutes and then start uh, start taking them out of the canner. So um, I will bring you guys back later. <laughs> How about that? We got everything out of the water bath canner and we ended up, oh, I got the hiccups. We ended up getting 16 half pints of the cowboy candy. I canned up the brine here as well and ended up getting eight of these pints of the, the brine. So we're gonna let it set here for the next 24 hours. And then tomorrow we're gonna go ahead and clean it, clean up the jars. We can take off the rings at that point and mark them. And we're gonna put them in, in the um, pantry for the next four weeks and then I will bring you guys back and we'll do a taste test. So we are back and we are ready to try out the cowboy candy. It has been almost three months. We did this in uh, August. No, that's not August. That's July 12th. It is now sometime in October. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and try this out. We're gonna try it out first plain. And then we're gonna try it out as per a lot of suggestions with like cream cheese and crackers and stuff like that. So, there we go, nice little pop sound. It smells like pickled jalapenos. Not bad. Let's try it plain. Good. That works. See, I see, like that. I see how it go. Yeah. Yeah. You do that. That'd be really good, like mixed into stuff. I can't think of like what would you do with that, but it just tastes amazing. Just add on to things. Yeah. Like if you like toast, it'd be really good on toast, yeah. probably. A nice heat to it. Let's try it. With yeah, let's try it. That's good stuff. That works. <laughs> it works a lot. Oh my gosh. That's good even with stale crackers. I'd recommend it. I would too. I recommend it. Oh my gosh. You know how picky I am. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is so good. I can definitely see why so many people swear by this and make sure that they make it every single year. This is so delicious. It has a nice kick to it. 
and you don't like the heat that is associated with it, you can always use, uh, what is it, a, a not a peño. It's basically, you can grow like a jalapeno that has no heat to it, but it just has the flavor. Mm -hmm. But the heat is definitely not overwhelming. No. It is just a nice, like it's basically already gone. Um, it has as much heat as you put into it will be basically what you'll get out of it. A nice little tang to it, especially with the cream cheese and on the cracker, it is delicious. You could put this on top of like meat, like a meatloaf or something like that. You could put it, I don't know. I don't know if you would put it on top of toast. I don't do that, so I'm not sure. What do you think it would be good with? Basically anything. Basically anything? Yeah, you just, it's just according that. to taste. Yeah, you can just add it to whatever Basically you want. Anything. A nice little glaze on top, any of those sorts of things. But so. if you've ever, if you've been tempted to make this, I would definitely recommend giving it a try. It's a great, it's water bath canning, so you don't have to bust out the pressure canner. And so just so many different things that make this thing amazing and delicious yeah. and highly recommended by us. So I hope you give it a try. Um, if you do, make sure to let me know down below. And if you have already tried this and you have some great ideas of things that you use it on, let us know down below as well. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, bye.